last week, two brand new AI image generators dropped. Imogen 3 from Google and Grok 2 from Elon. Both can generate hyper-realistic images with accurate text, but only one of them is open source and uncensored. Can you guess which one? That's right, the answer is neither. The real hero is actually Flux from Black Forest Labs, a new image gen model that's taking the world by storm, and is the underlying model that powers Grok's images. People are calling it the mid-journey killer and next-gen stable diffusion replacement, a model so realistic and dangerous that it must be stopped. Google DeepMind even released a paper this month that studied the ways people abuse generative AI. And shockingly, intimate images wasn't the top result. Apparently, the real danger is impersonation, which is something that Flux happens to be really good at. In today's video, you'll learn how to run this dangerous new AI locally, fine-tune it with your own custom data, and turn the results into video so you can level up your AI girlfriend in ways you never thought possible. It is August 19th, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. People on the internet are outraged by this photo, which was generated by Grok and its enabler, Flux. Although one could argue it's wholesome and shows how libtards and conservatives can work together to make the world a better place. It's obviously fake, but look at this photo. It's benign and realistic, but was generated with Flux. It's so realistic that it doesn't even feel uncanny. In just a minute, we'll learn how to use Flux and fine-tune it on our own images, but Google also just released its own new image generator called ImageGen 3. It has an amazing UI that also uses AI to generate prompts as you write them, and the image quality is actually quite impressive. It's a huge improvement from ImageGen 2, which had to be taken down for generating ethnically diverse Nazis, which was so bad that even Sergei said, quote, we definitely messed up. ImageGen 3 is far better tuned for generating Nazis, but it definitely won't let you impersonate people or generate anything even slightly offensive. But it does have some cool features like an editor, where you can regenerate different parts of the image. If you're serious about doing crazy stuff with AI though, the hottest model in town right now is Flux, which was created by former employees of Stability AI who worked on Stable Diffusion. That's pretty exciting, because Stable Diffusion 3 Medium was fairly disappointing, and now a new bar is set for open source models that will likely only be rivaled by Stable Diffusion 3 Large. In addition, there's already a bunch of LoRa's, or low-rank adaptations, that fine-tune Flux for special use cases, which you can find on places like Civit AI. In fact, you can even fine-tune it with pictures of yourself, like Matt Wolf did, to generate images for your Instagram to make it look like your life is actually cool. The easiest way to try Flux is to use a hosted version on a website like Foul, which not only has the base model, but also LoRa's like Flux Realism, which can generate photorealistic results consistently. But one thing to know is that there are three different Flux models, Flux Pro, Flux Dev, and Flux Schnell. The smallest model, Schnell, is the only one that's licensed under Apache 2.0. If you plan on using it commercially, that's the model you'd want to go with. Otherwise, you can access the Pro model through the Black Forest Labs API. But when it comes to experimentation, the Dev model will give you the highest quality and efficiency, it just can't be used commercially. Let's go ahead and run it locally now. One option is to use the Hugging Face Diffusers library in a Python script like this, which will automatically download the model, allowing you to prompt it and run it on your GPU with just a few lines of Python. But if you're not well endowed with a big GPU, make sure to enable the CPU offload mode. From there, assuming you have a virtual environment with your dependencies installed, you can run this script and start generating images locally. That's a good start, but the real power of open weights is being able to fine-tune your own models. There's a few different open source projects that make that way easier, like Simple Tuner or Xflux. If you want to use a node-based workflow, they have a setup for Comfy UI, or some training scripts that you can customize in YAML. To train your own LoRa, you'll first need some data, like a folder of images with corresponding JSON files that contain a caption for that image. Like if you're a deranged stalker, that could be some images of your ex-girlfriend. Or if you've never had a girlfriend, maybe a celebrity you're obsessed with. The important concept to remember is garbage in, garbage out. You'll get the best results with high-quality data. From there, you can fine-tune your hyperparameters, then start training your own model with with a single command. It's just that easy. Pretty crazy how easy that is, but the real benefit of this technology is that it allows us to generate our own AI girlfriends and boyfriends. Here's what a full stack AI partner looks like. Step one, build a data set of about 20 images and captions of what you want your partner to look like. Step 2. Train a LoRa based on Flux. You now have a model that can generate realistic, unique images. Step 3. Give your partner a voice using a tool like Eleven Labs, which can even be cloned from a real human. Then finally, Step 4. Use a tool like Pika Labs to generate a video in lip sync mode to match the voice to the video. Congratulations, you just cured loneliness. Don't hate me because I'm artificial. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.